I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. These are four nice chairs. Uh, I don't think they're period antiques. They're most certainly uh, early 20th century reproductions. I didn't know if they were French or uh, Italian, but uh, looking at the undersides of them, uh, it's kind of crude, but every one of them is marked Made in Italy. The problem is, is that they're very loose, and, uh, but we cannot remove the seats. The, the seats are good, so we don't have a lot of access to these joints, don't have any access to these joints. Uh, this one, which is the one I'm going to do on camera, also is, is broken straight across the, the, the leg here. They've been worked on before. I'll show you in more detail later. But someone put corner braces on them, and people have drilled dowels into all these joints. It didn't do any good. Well, it might have worked at first, but ultimately they're still loose, and the problem still remains. So let's see what we can do. The first thing I want to do is repair this crack. All the chairs have been drilled through the back joints, probably with a dowel. But on this leg, the broken one, the dowel is an oval. That tells me it was drilled at an angle, probably to run across this break. And that's probably why the break is rocking back and forth. I want to see if I can get this to open up a little bit. I'll start by taking this uh, brace off. Uh, all the chairs also have these braces. Yeah, they're pretty loose. I think those little brackets uh, maybe were helping a little bit. It's separating a little bit. I don't know if it'll go any further. Yeah, it's not going to come apart any further. You know, the pieces are held in place by the tenons on the seat rails. I'm going to work some epoxy in there and see if I can clamp it up. I'm going to use West System Epoxy. It comes in pump bottles, but I've put the resin and hardener in these squeeze bottles. So for small jobs, I'll just count out the drops. All right, uh, tomorrow we'll decide uh, what we might do to help strengthen this a bit. This uh, crack that I glued seems solid, but, and now you see movement in this other crack. I may have to do the same treatment there with the same uh, epoxy and get that down where it belongs. It also didn't cl close up here on this corner. But that's still got movement too, so I think I need to re-glue that and then the other side. You can see that it will close up. I just need to get a much more specific clamp on that corner.
make sure I'm getting closed up here at that little corner right there. And to help pull this little area right there as close as possible, I'm going to use a band clamp across the top of the chair. All right, I've got to wait overnight to let this epoxy dry. In the meantime, uh, let's talk about what I can do to strengthen this. I've taken one of the other chairs and I uh, tried spreading these joints a little bit, which obviously is pretty limited because the seat's holding everything together. But I was able to pull back the rush a little bit and uh, have a look at what kind of joinery we have here. I'm not sure uh, how well I can get this on camera, but this is the edge of the seat rail and then in there is a tenon. You might be able to see it from the top here a little bit. It's right there. And I was able to get in there with my uh, rule just enough to make some measurements. And then I made a sketch here of uh, what I think is going on. So I drew a cross section of the joint a cross section is cutting an imaginary line across here and looking straight down at it. These hash marks indicate a cross section. Here are your tenons, here's your leg. I don't know how deep these tenons go. I drew it like this, they could conceivably even meet here. So this part of the leg has a fair amount of wood, but of course the leg is broken all the way through. I think I'll go in from the outside corner here and cut in some new wood to go across that break. This opening is the right size, but I can see that there's a problem. I need to make a longer piece of plywood with the same size opening. Okay, this is good. Now I can do this without any clamps in the way.
I'm only going to take off a little at a time. I don't know what's behind that uh, dial either. Well, there you go. That's as deep as I'm going to go. I thought I'd be able to tell what kind of wood it is. I'm not sure at all. It might be walnut. But look how crazy the grain is right through this joint. I mean, no wonder it broke. There's the tenon to the side rail. I nicked that just a little bit. There's the tenon for the back rail. Didn't touch that. Cut through that dowel. There's the end of the dowel. It's so highly figured it's a little difficult to tell, but I believe it's walnut. I've got a nice piece of walnut here. It's got uh, good straight grain. First I'll square off these corners and then I'll mill this down to uh, closer to the size. I always like to take a little off the, uh, this inside corner to make sure that that's not hanging me up. This is the crack I glued previously and it opened up probably while I was working on it. Maybe I should have kept a cl clamp on it or something, but it would have been in the way. I'm going to work uh, more epoxy down in there and then use uh, yellow carpenter's glue for this glue up. When I glued this crack before with epoxy, I used unthinned epoxy because I was using it through a syringe. I wanted it to get down in there. But I think that maybe it was too thin. It might have run out. It wasn't enough. I'm going to put some unthinned epoxy in there now. And then I'm going to thicken it and put some more in. Let that alcohol flash off. <laughs> Just realized there's more of that crack I can get some epoxy into. Let's see if I can do that.
Alright, let this dry overnight. This leg and joint seem solid, so that's good. Um, this crack opened up a little bit, and I'm disappointed in that, but I was trying to bring it together the other way. Boy, I thought uh, that using a coping saw would be so uh, great, but this wood's just too thick, it's going to take forever. I think I'm better off just uh, hogging this out with a chisel. I think um, before I do any more work on this repair, I need to figure out how I'm going to glue the rest of the joints. Now the first thing I like to do is, uh, I mean, there's lots of movement in these joints. Um, I'm going to tap them a bit, see if they come apart. Looks like it has a little nail there. Boy, even though the first joint I tapped opened up a bit, the rest aren't moving at all. And they're all pinned, I think, at the factory. And of course then the, the seat itself holds all this together. And so I think I'm going to use an adhesive that I rarely use, but I got just for things like this. It's a CA glue uh, called Wonder Lock'em. And I think I can access these joints, drip some in, and clamp them up. See if I can pull back this rush a little bit and uh, expose the joint there. So I'll give uh, these joints uh, 10 or 15 minutes with the clamps on it, and then I'll go back and do the side joints. There's a lot of old glue around these joints. Somebody doing the same thing that I'm trying to do here. All right, that's the that's the last couple joints. I'm just going to let this sit overnight, and tomorrow we'll 
do the touch up on the repair. Wow, this chair is like a rock. That uh, CA glue worked really well. So now the touch up. I think my choice of walnut was a good choice. It's funny, my piece is straight grain, but the, the top grain here almost looks like it goes with that wild grain over here. This was tough to sand because this is right where the leg turns. And here you can clearly see this, this big knot that made up this joint. Got this old chamfer here. So now I'm going to sand that whole repair area again with 150 and then 220. And I'll just do that off camera. Okay, I'm ready to stain. I've got some uh, extra dark walnut dye stain here. I'm going to mix it 50-50 with some alcohol. Just proceeding carefully at first. Uh, the stain's not too dark. The thing with dye stain is that you can keep going back and adding more color and with a brush you can go back and add color to very uh, specific areas. All right, I'll let the uh, stain <coughs> dry for an hour or so and then <coughs> we'll seal it. Okay, now I'm going to seal these repair areas with shellac. I use shellac because it uh, builds fast and it has the uh, quality of being able to go over old finishes, you don't know what they are, and help seal in the contaminants. It itself is not that susceptible to contaminants. And then it lays a good foundation for top coats. Yeah, the shellac's dry just fine. I'm going to sand it with a little bit of uh, 500 paper and then tone it with the uh, Van Dyke Brown toner. And these toners are acrylic lacquer and um, I use acrylic lacquer because that's what comes in those 
cans of tone. All right, that uh, color coat dried fine. So now I'll hit it with uh, clear satin, uh, one of two coats. Okay, I'm going to uh, sand it lightly with 500 and spray it again with the satin. Okay, the repair area looks good. Now all I need to do is, uh, I'm going to polish it up. I'm going to use <coughs> 4 aught steel wool and this uh, orange oil beeswax polish. Here's the new piece of wood right there. There you have it. It's a nice set of uh, reproduction Queen Anne chairs. <clears throat> they all needed to be re-glued. They were very loose. And of course, didn't take them apart. Number one, that would have involved removing the seats, which we didn't want to do. And then the joints were nailed even originally at the factory, plus someone's run dowels through them, quite a few in some areas. But uh, they're strong as can be now. This one had a pretty serious repair to do over here, and uh, I think they look pretty good. <laughs>